So let's discuss complex functions now. Moving on to the higher levels. We have seen the basics just before this. So now moving on to complex functions. Okay, so let's let me write down the definition first. If for each value of z, each value of z which is a complex variable, in a given re region R, okay. So for each value of z, complex variable z, if we have one or more values of w, which is say in mates plus in u plus i y, then w is said to be w is said to be a complex function of z. So for each value, if we have for each value of z, if we have one or more values of w, then w is called complex function of z and we write w to be f of z, basically u plus i y where u and v are functions of x y. This is how we write. Well, this is like just a function of a real number like log x is log of a real number and similarly like that you can have log z okay so we'll see all that similarly exponential so we'll see all those okay examples of basic functions okay so so let's see one of the examples the exponential function of complex variable okay so let's see this so just now exponential we know for a real number so just like in real case real case how exponential is defined e power x it is defined as 1 plus x by 1 factorial plus x square by 2 factorial plus x cube by 3 factorial Similarly, till infinity. So this is how the exponential is defined in a real case. Okay. So similarly, so this, if you have a doubt, you can just go back for the Taylor series and just expand e power x Taylor series. This is how it will come. Okay. Similarly, we have exponential function for the complex variable. complex variable z as x plus i y okay so this is defined as e power z which is exponential of z this is written as 1 plus z by 1 factorial plus z square by 2 factorial so on the general term being z n by n factorial so, so on till infinity this is how exponential of a complex variable is defined okay so now here we can actually if you look at the exponential or exponential form of z, the exponential form of z is basically written as something like this. So this will prove why it is written as the exponential form is called as z will prove. Okay. So this comes from this definition actually. Okay. From this exponential definition it comes. So let's see. So e power z is 1 plus z by 1 factorial plus z square by 2 factorial so on till infinity so if i substitute i mean z is x plus i y so let x to be zero okay so z becomes i y so if i substitute like that so e power i y will be one plus i y by one factorial plus i y whole square by two factorial so on till infinity so one plus i y i square is y square by two factorial so on we'll have Okay, infinity. So let me just uh, type and let me just write down the third term also z cube by 3 factorial which will be i y whole cube by 3 factorial plus so on till infinity. So this i i y whole cube will be i square into uh, so it will be basically 
minus y cube by 3 factorial and so on so this can be expressed in this form 1 minus y square all the real parts together will be something like this into similarly all the i terms together y minus y cube by 3 factorial plus y power 5 by 5 factorial all this i can write okay so now this let let us simplify it further so if I simplify further I can write cos y as 1 minus y square by 2 factorial plus y power 4 by 4 factorial so on is cos y this is again from the Taylor series expansions of cos y and sin y and sin y can be written like this okay so going by that we can write i by s cos y plus i sin y so in general e power i theta becomes cos theta plus i sin theta so this is a very important result now we know the polar form of z which is z is equal to r cos theta plus i sin theta this we have again seen from x plus i y in writing x as r cos theta and y as r sin theta so writing in that sense it becomes like this but now we have proved that cos theta plus i sin theta is e power i theta so i can write z to be r e power i theta so this is basically called as the exponential form of a complex number exponential form of a complex variable okay so this is an important result okay so we have seen the definition of exponential function and then we have seen the important result e power i theta as cos theta plus i theta i sin theta and then the exponential form of a complex variable so let's solve some problems separate into real and imaginary parts okay so what they have given is exponential i plus i i by 2 you need to separate so this we can write e power 5 plus i pi by 2 which i can write e power 5 into e power i pi by 2 okay and e power 5 is e power 5 e power i theta is like cos theta plus i sin theta so this can be written as e power 5 cos 90 is 0 plus i sin it is 1 so I can write i e power 5 so this has can be written as real and as a real part is 0 imaginary part is e power 5 so this is how you can expand so let's take another example 5 plus 3i you need to find out the real and the imaginary part okay so this can be written as 5 plus 3i whole square okay and let's expand this so this becomes 5 square plus 3i whole square plus 2 into 5 into 3i so this will be 25 i square is minus 9 plus this is 30i so this i can write e power 16 plus 30i and this going in the same form i can write e power 16 to e power 30i so this is nothing but uh, e power 16 now expanding it using the exponential form you can turn cos 30 plus i sin 30 okay so the real part is e power 16 cos 30 and the imaginary part is e power 16 sin 30 imaginary part which is attached to i so basically all these things can be simplified all the and anything and all the exponential of a complex number also can be expressed in just a plus ib form okay real and imaginary form so now let's see the circular functions of of complex variable z okay so circular means sine and cosine functions okay now uh, let's derive that so e power i 
why we know that it's cos y plus i sin y similarly e power minus i y is cos minus y plus i sin minus y which can be written as cos minus theta is cos theta and sin minus theta is minus sin theta so this I can write now this is 1 this is 2 if you add 1 plus 2 you will get e power i y plus e power minus i y okay is equal to we will get 2 cos y the imaginary parts will get cancelled so from this I can write cos y as half of e power i y plus e power minus i y okay similarly if I subtract 1 and 2 I'll get if I subtract 1 and 2 so e power i y minus e power minus i y is equal to i sin y plus i sin y so basically sin y will be 1 by 2 i e power i y minus e power minus i y okay so that's why so in the same lines I mean similar to this uh, I mean just going by the similar philosophy sin jet is sine of a complex number is defined as e power i z minus e power minus i z by 2 2 i 2 i okay and cos z the cosine of complex variable is defined as e power i z plus e power minus i z by 2 so this is how sine and cosine of complex variables are defined So now let's see the logarithmic function. Okay, so if z which is x plus i y and w which is u plus i y is related in, in this way, is related in such a way that in such a way that that exponential of z is exponential of w sorry exponential of w is z okay so in that sense then we call w is said to be logarithm of z to the base e base e and is written as W as log z to the base e. This is how it is written. Okay, so also e power w plus um, 2 and i and pi will be written as log. Okay, so let, let me just write on. So this is basically the definition. So if e power w is z, then w is log z to the base e. This is how the logarithmic of z is defined. Okay, so now if we have e power w plus i into y, I can just simplify it in this way. Okay, and e power w is z. Now call e power i t. This this can be we we can use this way. Cos theta plus i sin theta. Important result which we derived. So we can write cos two n pi plus i sin two n pi. Now n is an integer here okay so cos multiples of 2 pi it's periodic in 2 pi so cos, so cos 360 or cos 720 or multiples of that is basically 1 is equal to cos 0 and sin 0 or sin 360 or sin 720 is 0 so this is basically z okay so e power w is z and we know that e power w plus 2 i n pi is also z so we can write log z is equal to log of w plus 2 i n pi okay so logarithm of basically logarithm of a complex number I mean this is not log here okay logarithm of z we can also write in this way w plus uh, is w plus 2 i n pi so logarithm of z 
I mean logarithm of a complex number has infinite number of values and is therefore a multi-valued function. Okay. Because depending on n, it will have many values. Okay. So you can say that it's a multi-valued function. Okay, multi-valued function means if I give you a value of z, I can get so many values depending on n. Okay. If n is zero, it is only w. Otherwise, it can be w plus 2y pi or 2n plus. So all this happens because e power if e power w is z, then e power w plus i into 2n pi is also z. So based on that, the logarithm of a function becomes a multi-valued function. So we have seen exponential function. We have seen circular functions sine and cosine and we have seen logarithmic. Now let's see basic calculus of complex number. Of complex numbers, complex function basically. Okay, so let's see the derivative, how it is defined, the derivative of of f of j. Okay, so let's see how it is defined. So let, uh, let w be a function of z, be a single valued function. Single value means for every value of z you have only one value of w. Single value function of the variable z which is nothing but x plus i y. Then the derivative of w is equal to f of z is defined to be dou w by dou z is defined as f dash z and it is equal to the limit when it is equal to the f of z plus delta z so it is defined in a similar way how derivative is defined for a real number small change in z so now this the top numerator is the functional change in the value of z if there is a small change in z so that the change vanishes to zero. This is how the derivative of is defined. So this is limit. Okay, LT is basically limit. Okay. Now this is defined in a such that provided the limit exists and has same values. For all the different ways in which delta z approaches zero. So what it means is first of all a limit should be defined, limit should exist, then only you can call that dw by dz or the derivative of w with respect to z to be of this form okay so in whatever way the delta z approaches 0 the limit should exist and should have the same values so basically it means that the function should be continuous like in, in the case of real number if a function is continuous then only we can talk about differentiable okay then then only you can say different I mean the, the function is differentiable now when you say differentiable we say it has a unique tangent so similarly here it means that if the limit value is same for all the values of for all the limit values same just in whatever direction delta z approaches zero then you can say that it has unique tangent something like that okay so now let's see an important theorem which basically talks about the necessary and sufficient condition for w to exist for all values of z okay now now okay at one point okay derivative is defined this now we are interested in what if the complex function of z which is w is defined in, is defined for all the values it exists for all the values means the derivative exists for all the values of z so what is the condition for that so let's see that so what what this theorem says is we'll not prove this we'll just lay down the statement. So necessary and sufficient condition 
for derivative of function w is equal to u of xy plus i v of xy is function of z to exist is basically is equal to f dash z okay to exist for all values of z to exist for all values of z in a region r r okay so these are the conditions so if w is u plus iv and if it has to be equal to the derivative of z that is f dash z then what what conditions w should what conditions what are the necessary conditions for the derivative to exist at all points that's that's the basic thing so the condition is the do u by do x the partial derivative of u with respect to x partial derivative of u with respect to y similarly the partial derivative of do v by do x partial derivative of do v by do r so do do u by do x do u by do y do v by do x do v by do r continuous functions of x and y are continuous functions of x and y in r okay so that is first condition and the second condition is that the derivatives has to be equal i mean the do u by do x has to be equal to do do v by do y and do v by and do u by do y has to be equal to minus do v by do x so these are how these are the two important conditions do u by do x has to be equal to do v by do y do u by do y has to be equal to minus do v by do x so these are uh condition and sometimes and most i mean in literature these are called as cauchy weman condition weman condition or basically typically called as cr conditions okay so what are cr conditions cr conditions has to be satisfied for derivative to exist at all points derivative to exist at all points okay so for derivative to exist for all the points okay so uh, let me not write uh, f, let me write this as f this as f of z only it's not f z okay so w is basically f of z okay and w can also be written as u plus iv now for w for the derivative of w to exist at all points it should satisfy this weman condition okay and also once it satisfies this basically the uh, the partial derivative of exists or uh, continuous function of x and y and the cr conditions are satisfied then one can write w dash which is f dash z as do u by do x plus i do v by do x or do v by do y minus i do u by do v. so so this is like differentiating with respect to x okay i mean you can forget about the y you can just differentiate with respect to x or you can just differentiate with respect to y and use this okay so there are two important things like for w which is f of z to possess derivative at all points it has to satisfy these two conditions basically the u and v should have the derivatives of u and v with respect to x and y should be continuous and the partial derivatives of u with respect to x to u by do x has to be do v by do y and do u by do y has to be minus do v so it has to satisfy cr conditions and once it satisfies then you know that the the derivative w dash or f dash z can be just written in this way like just differentiating with respect to x okay okay so this is all about uh, the theorem we will not prove this but remember the statements are quite important okay so now let's come to an important terminology analytic function okay so a function see the definition of function f of z is said to be okay 
so when it is called analytic function we'll see a function f of z which is single valued and poses unique derivative a unique derivative with respect to z with respect to z at all points of a region r then that function is called uh, analytic function of z in that region it's called analytic function of z in that region so a function of z which is a single valued and it poses a unique derivative with respect to z at all points so this we have seen what are the conditions for unique derivative to possess a derivative at all point uh, possess a derivative at all points we have seen the condition okay the cauchy riemann theory okay so this means that the analytic function should satisfy shear condition okay so a point which which a point at which analytic function stops or ceases to possess a derivative so that point is called singular so when you when you say this function has become singular it means that it is not derivative at that point it doesn't have a derivative at that point so the analytic function going by the theorem which we have just seen analytic function the function to be analytic the cre equation the cauchy riemann equation are nothing but the necessary and sufficient conditions necessary and sufficient condition for the function f of z to be analytic in r to be analytic in r okay so for a function to be analytic function that is to possess a derivative at all points it has to be it has to the necessary and sufficient conditions are conditions are cre equations or the cauchy riemann equations okay so now let's see some functions let's see whether they are analytic or not okay so check whether the function is analytic okay if s yes, find out the derivative find the derivative so this is just applying that theorem whatever we have derived so first example is w is equal to 2xy plus i into x square minus y square okay so this i can always write u plus iv so u is 2xy and v is x square minus y square so now let's calculate dou u by dou x which will be y dou u by dou y will be 2x dou u by dou x will be 2y similarly dou v by dou x will be 2x and dou v by dou y will be minus 2y so you can say that these are continuous functions in x and y so condition 1 is satisfied condition 2 is do u by do x so these are continuous so condition number 1 is satisfied do u by do x has to be do v by do y so let's see whether this is true do u by do x is 2y and do v by do y is minus 2y so this these two are not equal so it's not satisfied okay similarly you can just look at the other thing anyhow it's not satisfying but still if you want to look at the other thing so do u by do y is 2x and do v by do x is minus 2. so 2x is equal to minus 2x which is not possible so cr conditions failed cauchy riemann condition failed and the necessary condition the necessary and sufficient condition for function f of z to be analytic 
or basically W to be analytic. Okay, so has failed. So this is not analytic. Not analytic. Function is not analytic. Okay, so let's now see the other function log j log of complex variable. Let's see how uh, whether it's analytic or not. So jet now in order to expand this, not to first we need to express in terms of x and y, right? So just to express in x y, let's use the exponential form. So this is what we need to check. Use the exponential form. J as r e power i theta. So log j will become log r e power i theta. That is log r plus log e power i theta. So this is log r plus i theta. And theta now r now r and theta can be written in x and y. So r is e power x square plus y square theta is tan inverse y by x. Okay. So it is root over x square plus y square plus i theta, which is tan inverse. Y by x. Okay, so this root I can bring outside. You can write in this way plus i tan inverse y by x. So this is like u plus i v. Okay, or u plus i v. I mean, let me write in this way u plus i v. Okay, so u is half log. x square plus y square and v is tan inverse y by x. Okay, so do u by do x will be uh, let's differentiate half log will be x square plus y square into two x will be x by x square plus y square. This is a continuous function except that x and oh, this is a continuous. This is a continuous function. Then similarly, do u by do y is y by similarly. I mean, because it's symmetric in x and y, so do u by do y to be y by x plus y square. Now, do v by do x will be one by one plus x square because tan inverse x is one by one plus x square, and then the internal derivative with respect to x. So it is y is constant and x one by x is minus x square. So this. Can be written like this: minus y by one simplified. Similarly, do v by do y is basically one by so this is whole square. Don't forget that one plus y by x whole square. Now, with respect to y, it is constant, so into one by x. So this will come out to be x square x square plus y square. Okay, so just check. Let's let us check the condition do u by do x. Is do v by do y? That was the first condition. Let's see whether it satisfies. So, y by x square plus y square and do v by do y is. I mean, do u by do y actually. Sorry, do u by do y. The first condition is basically do u by do y is do v by. Okay. So I mean, let's let's write down instead of just. So the CR conditions are do u by do x has to be do v by do y. Okay, do u by do x has to be do v by do y, and do u by do y has to be minus do v by do x. Okay, so just check. Now, do u by do x is basically equal to do u by do y, so condition one is satisfied. And do u by do y is equal to minus do v by do x because if you multiply with minus, so these two will become equal. So together satisfied, both the conditions are satisfied. So you can say that CR condition is satisfied and the function is empty. But only one thing is that at zero comma zero. The derivatives will not exist. The derivative, the partial derivatives will blow off. The partial derivatives blow off. Blow off means reach are not defined. 
okay something like that so except at that point it is empty everywhere so except at 0 comma 0 x comma y taking 0 comma 0 w z is analytic at all points is analytic everywhere okay okay so now if it is analytic we are supposed to find out what is the derivative dw by dz will be equal to dou u by dou x plus i dou v by dou x okay so that will be basically x by x square plus y square which we have just found out and i into minus y by x square plus y square so this comes out to be x minus i y by x square plus y square okay and this i can actually write x plus i y because the denominator i can always treat as x plus i y into x minus i y and at the numerator i have x minus i y so this can be written as x plus i y okay and this is nothing but 1 by z okay so i can say that log z is 1 by z the derivative of log z is 1 by z such that z is greater than 0 I mean, z is not equal to 0 sorry z can be negative but z is not equal to 0 okay because otherwise this is not equal so this is how a simple case to find out the derivative of function but you have to check that first you have to check whether it is analytic or not if it is analytic then you can just differentiate by using this simple method so we have seen what is a complex function we have seen various complex functions like exponential logarithm and sine and cosine and then we have seen uh, what is what are shear conditions and why uh, there is a theorem saying that the shear conditions are the necessary and sufficient condition for a function to possess a derivative and a function that possesses derivative at all the points is called analytic and where it doesn't possess is called a singular point okay now let's see a word about harmonic function what is harmonic function okay so we know that when f of z is v plus i v okay if it is an analytic function in some region of z plane in some region of jet plane okay so in some region of jet plane we know that if it, this is analytic function then cr conditions are satisfied satisfied right so when cr conditions are satisfied you can write dou u by dou x as dou v by dou y and so this is one similarly dou u by dou y i can write minus dou v by dou x so this is two now if I differentiate 1 with respect to x and 2 with respect to y okay so then I can write dou square u by dou x square is equal to dou square v by dou x dou y I can write 1 the 2 will become dou square u by dou y square is equal to minus dou square v by dou x dou y right I mean um, it will be basically dou y dou x but we know that they are continuous then we can always write dou square v by dou x dou y as dou square v by dou y dou x so using this the above equation will be basically dou square u by those two I can add and it will be something like this dou square u by x square plus dou square by dou dou square by dou y square is 0 so this is basically called as the Laplacian of u this is basically La Laplacian equation so an equation and u satisfied Laplacian equation similarly to differentiate 1 with respect to y and 2 with respect to x then you can also prove that differentiating 1 with respect to y and 2 with respect to x you can also prove that 
dou square u by dou and dou square v by dou x square plus dou square v by dou y square is equal to 0. So u and v satisfy Laplace equation. This is actually called Laplace equation in the operator. This operator is called Laplacian operator. Okay. Okay. And this is the reason why they are called harmonic function. U and V are called harmonic function. And their basically their theory is called potential theory. It's just a point where f of z is if f of z happens to be a quantity function, then u and v are harmonic function. That is what u and v satisfy Laplace equation. So that is one point. Now point about another point is consider two families of curves of curves. So u x comma y is c1 and v x comma y is c2. Okay, so two families of curve. Okay, so this is say say one and this is say two. Okay, so now if I differentiate one with respect to x, I can write dou u by dou x plus dou u by dou y because y can be a function of x. So I can write d over dx plus c is equal to zero. So this is just the uh, differentiation of u, but y also can be a function of x. So dou u by dou x plus dou u by dou y and into the internal derivative. So d y by dx can be written as minus dou u by dou x by dou u by dou y which can be written as by the CR conditions dou u by dou y and dou u by dou x okay and let's say this is m1 just say that this is m1 okay so similarly I mean this we have done on the equation 1 similarly if you do it on the equation 2 I can say that dy by dx is equal to minus dou v by dou x by dou v by dou y. This is taking equation 2. Taking equation 2, I got m2. Okay, so just now from here we can say that if you multiply these two, I mean m1, m2 it is minus 1 right just from both we can say that m1 m2 is minus 1 so what it means is that i mean if you just equate two over dou x from here and here you get that m1 is minus 1 by m2 or m1 m2 is equal to minus 1 so what we say is that they form an orthogonal system so u and v basically form an orthogonal system u and v form an orthogonal family of orthogonal system okay you and we form orthogonal system or orthogonal okay so if you have something like this u v will be something like this so this is v and this is u u is equal to some constant v is equal to some constant so u and v basically are orthogonal because what we have seen is dy by dx we have seen that the slopes I mean they are perpendicular they are perpendicular and the slopes part of the slope is minus one so hence we can say that every analytic function defines two families of curves u and v which form an orthogonal system so that is the point here and we have also seen that u and v are harmonic okay so a couple of points what is an analytic function and then the properties of u and v we have seen that they are harmonic and they are they form an orthogonal system okay so we have not solved much problems but we have solved two important problems I and mean two practice problems just to find out whether w is analytic or not i think once it is analytic you can just differentiate it with respect to x only and the derivative of w with respect to x will be just like dou u by dou x plus i dou u by dou x okay so this is about the